Hi, hello, good day to everyone. Welcome to Mathematics Lessons Made Easy with a Teacher Kibi. So for today, we are going to have our lesson all about angles and its kinds. So the objectives for today's lesson will be to classify the different kinds of angles according to its degrees. Now, before we start with anything else, it is very important that we all uh, should be or we all should know what are those different kinds of lines because angles are formed and may be formed out of those lines that we have or it may be formed out of two line segments or rays that intersect with each other so the first line the first um, kind of lines that i have here is what we call the parallel lines okay so when do we say that we have parallel lines parallel lines are two lines that are extended infinitely in opposite direction but they will never or they do not intersect with each other so um you can see here that line AB and line CD are extending infinitely in opposite direction. However, you can see clearly see that they do not intersect. So, out of parallel lines, um, hindi tayo makakagawa or hindi tayo makakakita ng ang angle. Unless, meron tayong isang line na in-intersect. In-intersect yung dalawang lines natin na yan. Then, that's the time that we can see an angle. Now, let's proceed to the next one. I have here line GH and another line EF. Now, you clearly see that line EF and line GH intersect with each other. And for that, we're going to name that lines as intersecting lines. When we say intersecting lines, you have two lines that intersect and for, does form a common a common intersection which we are going to call vertex of that angle so in this case magkakaroon na tayo ng iba't ibang angles okay and we're going to identify those kinds of angles the pair of angles in the next video for now we're just only going to determine what are those kinds of angles uh, depending upon on how the angle open opens Okay, so next we have another special intersecting lines which we are going to call as perpendicular lines. Okay, so when we say perpendicular lines, you have two lines that intersect with each other just like a while ago. However, in this case, uh, it forms exactly a 90 degrees measure of angle. So, you clearly see that it forms a 90 degrees measure of an angle because of, of an angle because there is a, a symbol, a special symbol which is a square right here. So, yan, yang symbol na yan ay, uh, tells us that there is a right angle. Kung maga parang nakakita ka lang, imagine mo yung rectangle or square na sobrang quadrado, di ba? Parang ganun. So, therefore, itong line KL mo and itong line AJ, IJ are perpendicular lines. And out of perpendicular lines, we can say that kapag may isa dyan na uh, automatic yon lahat ng angles na pwede nating mabuo uh, out of that perpendicular lines, lahat ng yon ay 90 degrees na. Okay, next, let's go to the last uh, pair of angles, lines that we have, which is the skew lines. Okay, so when do we say that we have skew lines? You will see the, you will see here that uh, itong line na to at saka itong line na to, if we try to extend them, okay, mapapansin mo na somehow at some point, they're going to intersect with each other. So, intersecting lines ba ang skew lines? No. Skew lines happens when we have a 3D figure, a three-dimensional figure because you can clearly see that this line is found somewhere in this dimension and this line found somewhere in this dimension. So even if you try to extend this line going there and even if you try to extend this line going there, they will really do not intersect with each other kasi nasa ibang dimension yung 
line na to at saka yung line na to. Maliban na lang kung merong isang line dito na in-intersect etong line na to, then that's intersecting lines. However, dahil naka naka-position yung dalawang lines mo sa magkaibang uh, dimension or magkaibang lugar, then that is what we call skew lines. Now, let's proceed to angle. What is an angle? Okay, so I have here back to line LP and another line which is WT or TW. You can clearly see that they intersect with each other. If I try to remove this part, okay, so if I try to remove this part, you will see here and also this one, na talagang meron tayong nabuong angle. And this ray is what we call the initial ray and we sometimes refer this to as stationary ray kasi parang yan yung ray na hindi gumagalaw. Okay? Naka, nandiyan lang siya. Alright. Alright. Now, this ray, okay, so, is what we call the terminal ray or sometimes we call this as stationary ray and when we say it's stationary ray or terminal ray, it is the side, the one that keeps on moving or it rotates. Okay? Nagro-rotate siya. And as it rotates, we all know that your angle becomes larger and larger. And sa bawat pagbuka ng angle mo, or sa bawat pag-move ng terminal ray na yan, ng angle na yan, uh, may mga tawag dun sa mga kinds of angles na yan. At yan ang pag-aaralan natin for today. Now, these sides are none other than but the rays that make up the angle. And this point is what we call the vertex which is the common point where the two rays meet with each other. So, an angle cannot be complete. Hindi natin pwedeng tawagin na angle ang isang angle. If it has no vertex, if it has only one ray, kailangan dapat makakakita kayo ng dalawang sides at saka isang vertex. Dapat nagkaroon ng common end point. Alright, now, uh, going back here, how do we name an angle? Let us recall, if point has a name, line has a name, Plane has a name, so the same with angle. May may pangalan din sila, and they can be named according to the points on that angle. So if you have your point T, point A, and point P, then we can name that angle as angle TAP, or we can inter interchangeably name it as angle P. A D. So if you are asked where is your angle T A P, where is your angle P A T, that is your angle. Okay, so this is how uh, we name an angle um, commonly. Okay, now there are times that an angle can also be named using the vertex that is found on that angle. So you can see that your point. A here is the vertex, so we can name that angle as angle A also. So, if you are asked where is your angle A, then that's your angle A. However, we can only use a capital letter if you can own, if you can see a single angle here. So, like this one, we can name this as angle A. Okay? As an angle A. Pero kapag ka nagkataon kasi, there are cases na may mga lines na nag-intersect, we cannot use a capital letter kasi parang nangyayari, magkakaroon ng maraming vertex. I mean, nagkaroon ng iisang vertex yung lahat ng mga angles mo. And it's hard to identify which angle is that kung isang letter lang yung gagamitin mo. So usually, dapat talaga tatlong letters or we may sometimes, you may sometimes see a number there and if you see that number there, therefore, we can refer to that angle as angle 1. So, if you are asked where is your angle 1, then that's your angle 1. Now, we can also name an angle using a small script letter found there in the interior of angle of that angle. So, we can name that angle as angle X. Minsan, uh, kapag ka problem solving na, ang geometry, pwede pa rin naman kasi yun mapasukan ng mga lessons tackled all about algebra. So, you can see small letters, script X there, Y, Z, like that. Or, you may see an equation there or an algebraic expression there. Okay, so that's how you are going to name an angle. Yeah. 
Now, this part is what you call the interior part of your angle and that part is the exterior part of your angle. It is very important to identify where is the interior, where is the exterior because we're going to use um, this. May apply natin siya sa next lesson natin. Now, what is an angle? An angle is defined by the amount of turn between two rays that share a common end point. And this amount of turn is called the degrees. So you will clearly see here that this one is your initial ray and this one is your terminal ray, the one that keeps on rotating like a clock. However, this one is counterclockwise. So in this case, yung angle natin ay nag-open or bumuka siya or yung terminal side natin ay nag um, nag open ng up to 90 degrees and how paano nakuha tong 90 degrees na to of course we have to use a protractor okay so just a sort of recall what is a protractor a protractor is a device used to measure an angle or it may be used also to draw an angle now, let's proceed to the different kinds of angles. What are the different kinds of angles? Back during our lesson for the second quarter, I did already told you that there are three different kinds of angles. Those are actually the basic kinds of angles and those are the acute, right, and obtuse. And for today, we're going to add three more kinds of angles. But let us recall, what is an acute angle? Okay, take a look at this one. You see that? An acute angle is an angle that is more than 0 degree but less than 90 degrees. So, any angle that is found between uh, 0 and 90, so ibig sabihin ang 89 ang 1 degree ay mga acute angle sila. Malalaman mo naman kung acute sila kasi mas makipot sila kaya nga sila tinawag na acute. It's because it's cute. Next, we have the right angle. What is a right angle? There's your right angle. A right angle is an angle with a measure of exactly 90 degrees. You will know that it is a right angle because of this special symbol you will see for right angle. Okay, so makakakita ka talaga ng ano, ganito, parang pa square. So that's your right angle. Next, we have the obtuse angle. When do we say that we have an obtuse angle? There. So you can see na yung terminal side natin ay nag-open up uh, at lumagpas siya sa 90 degrees. So if that is the case, we are going to call that angle as an obtuse angle. And obtuse angle has a measure of more than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees. Next, let's have another kind of angle which I... Uh, which is called straight angle. When do we say that we have a straight angle? It's simply like this. Alright, so you see that? The terminal side or the terminal ray moves from a stationary or initial ray going to there and it forms a straight line. So therefore, you have an angle with uh, which is straight and it has a measure of exactly 180 degrees. Next, we have the reflex angle. When do we say that we have a reflex angle? Take a look at this. Alright, so a reflex angle is an angle that opens which is more than 180 degrees but less than 360 degrees. So like this one, actually, pwede naman makarating hanggang dito banda basta hindi siya makakakompleto ng isang ikot. Lagpas siya sa 180, so starting from 181 up to 359. Diba sa hindi, hindi siya aabot ng 360 degrees. 
malalaman mo naman kung kung reflex angle reflex angle siya kasi there is a symbol there showing on how your terminal ray opens so in this case yung terminal ray natin na to the green ray ay nag open nag open bumukas siya from here going there so lagpas talaga siya ng guhi kumbaga lagpas siya ng straight angle so that's a reflex angle you may also wonder ma'am can i call this as an acute angle the answer is no because an acute angle mas makipot yung ibinuka niya um kung kung ang symbol ay naandito sa loob yung arrow natin ay nandito ay I minsan mean, this one kung ang arrow ay nandito Therefore, then that's the time na tatawagin natin siyang acute. Etong etong symbol na to, which is the curved arrow, nagpapahiwatig na bumuka ng lagpas sa 180 yung angle mo. Therefore, that's a reflex angle. And tatawagin natin perigon ang isang angle. If the terminal side completes its full rotation. So, kapag nakakompleto ng isang ikot ang terminal ray natin, therefore, we are going to call that as perigon angle. Sometimes, in other, um, uh, in other books, tinagtawag siyang revolution, um, full rotation also. 